Curtis, I came over here to tell you that I loved you. I'm glad that Amy's gone. She's looking after her own mental health. Any of those that are watching Love Island. Thursday 11th of Halloween. Still no sign of the t-shirts from the manufacturers, which is fine. No real rush. I still need to sort the website and I still need to take a few pictures, like proper edgy ones in Shoreditch with the t-shirts on, do you know what I mean? Don't know where to look, I'm vlogging on the phone. Let me change it up for you. I'm in a bit of a mad dilemma because on the very rare occasion that the two align, which is a rest day, because I have higher fats, and I work in Shoreditch, I'll get a croissant. But I'm now having iced lattes. I don't know if the combination of an iced latte can go with a croissant. First of all, problems. If anyone does work in the Shoreditch area, then seven o'clock, Tesco, fresh bakery. Hey, the old walking into the, the old walking into the shot scene. I did get a croissant for those that are eagerly anticipating whether I got one or not. Nothing fancy, just an all butter. Splendid. Those that follow the Instagram Q and A's every morning, most mornings. When someone asked me, how'd you get your hair? And I said, you do the woolly hat trick. Sort of. Basically, you style your hair. You style your hair and then you put a woolly hat on and the hat, the heat presses it and then you can just leave it. I've got well curly hair. And you know what, another common question that I get a lot of is what camera do you use? Hey, this is what camera I use. I use a Canon EOS R. Fantastic, I switched it up from the GH5. One of the best decisions I made in my life, apart from going to all you can eat data. The lens on it is a Canon 16 to 35 millimeter EF Rode video mic. And that's pretty much it. Oh, and the big anal bead-esque tripod. And when I can't be bothered to take this monstrous setup away with me, I just use the Canon G7X Mark II. I do believe the Mark III is coming out in September, just in time for IB 4.0. So really high quality, crystal clear vlog footage. But a great starting camera, you probably see a lot of YouTubers use a Canon G7 X point and shoot. Great, like I said, use it when I'm on holiday. And even if you don't, like, just use your phone. I spent the first three years on YouTube using my iPhone and vlogging. This is probably the nicest camera to vlog on because when you're in the street, just quickly, even this, you still got to sort of like focus it. In, do you know what I mean? But the can it like the use your phone. I'm a bit too excited on this in this scene. Kelby, nice. Mannequin's looking thicker than a Snickers. I also use Final Cut. I tell you who's looking thicker than a Snickers, the new, the new female. Not bird, female on Love Island. She's my favorite person. I hope her and Ovi create a fantastic relationship together. The, the and the final, the final nail in the coffin is Final Cut Pro. I use Final Cut Pro to edit all my vlogs on. Just chuck a Peter McKinnon lot on it to make it look kind of like, like nice. And there we go, really. If you've got any more questions about camera or audio equipment, just chuck them in the comment section below. This is for the vlog, Bendy. Hmm? This is for the vlog. <laughs> Not Instagram, the vlog, you're going on YouTube. Yeah, you know. Is it? Yeah. That's different. If you live in Penn, actually, fuck it. If you live in South East London, yeah. the Nero's. Real G, in it. <laughs> So you probably clicked on this video wondering how you vlog, like some of the greats, Casey Neistat, Pete McKinnon, TM Cycles. Sarcastic, egotistical behaviour, underpinned with notes of real egotistical behaviour. The, fir the first most important part of any vlog is the music. Music is key when you're vlogging because it dictates the mood. 
See what I did there, ladies and gentlemen? It's a trick in the industry, okay? Yeah, film, yeah, known as the J cut. So this this film here of me pulling out the chair, underneath that, we laid down me starting talking. So you don't get this weird, awkward, non-silence, and it's too short to use music. So we just use the audio from the next clip underneath. A J cut. I'm a, a sort of house person, as you can understand from my YouTube. So I use Progressive Astronaut for a lot of my stuff. If you wanted like a, a rappy kind of grimy vibe, then you could possibly use Blunted Beats. Or if you want that Casey Neistat upbeat, quite quirky, you could use Chill Hop or you could use the Audio Library. Generally, if you click on any of those, to the right-hand side will be a list of other channels that are very similar and that have very similar music to those channels, so you can you can have a little look on there. Once you've got the music, then you usually incorporate some sort of montage. Those montages can be short, they can be long, you can do the stereotypical YouTube thing of dropping and changing scene on every beat, I do that sometimes. Or if it's like quite a nice melodic track, I'll just let it flow, not necessarily drop the music on every single beat, because it becomes a little bit tiresome. If you listen to a music track and there's any sort of then you can always do the reverse tool, or there's any like lulls or dips in the music, then you can do sort of slow motion. And then we go on to the next scene. See so what I did there was a bit like B-roll. Because going from one scene where you're vlogging straight at the camera to another scene vlogging straight at the camera is just horrible. So if you know you're going to transition from two speaking scenes, get some fluff or some B-roll in between. B-roll is also used if you're doing like long documentaries for example. I've just finished the De Novo documentary of Ben's story where there was very long scenes of him talking. If you want to chop between those, you put some B-roll over the top. So if you've got like a 10 minute section and you just want three minutes and you've got to cut it, you cut it, put some B-roll over the top and then link the two scenes together. Do you get me? See, what I'm trying to, what I'm trying to say there is no idiot's guide to vlogging. The beauty of a vlog is an individual's interpretation of what they want to convey on the camera and for you lot, the audience, to see. There is no right or wrong way, well, to a certain degree there is, but that's pretty much the bread and butter of what I've covered of how to vlog. Maybe we'll go into some more intricate details and advanced vlogging in another video. I'll be charging for that, 1,000 pounds. Anyway, this is a, this is a, is it called a synopsis? Like on the on the on the screen now is a synopsis of how to vlog. Yeah. Don't think it is. This is just a, a basic understanding, maybe, of how to vlog. You'll have an intro scene. Might be travelling, might be you cooking or eating. Music, engage the audience. And basically what we want to do out throughout the whole entirety of the vlog is dip in and out of the title. So for example, you saw me in the office, I was talking about the camera gear, that's relating to how to vlog. Then you saw me walking about, getting my hair cut, and now we're going back to this how to vlog malarkey. So it's dipping in and out of the title, whilst including some vlog footage. So intro, montage scene, travel, food, engage the audience. Might sit down at work, briefly talk about the title, Film you coming home, doing some bits, daily activities, more music, keep the audience engaged. Dip back into the title a little bit, not too much. Then some more vlog activities. Maybe we're going to meet the boys, going out on a night out, maybe some gym footage. And then you finish the bulk of the answer at the end of the video, which is pretty much what I'm going to do now. But I've got an insight package that I'm going to go over. But if this was the full video, I'd be, I'd be wrapping up here. You could do an Instagram Q&A, for example. You could end on a question that's related to the title. But that's pretty much the bread and butter of how to vlog. Even though there's no correct way to vlog, sort of is. That's my interpretation anyway. Thank you! Oh no, hold on.
in seat. Uh, big re-up, big re-up this month. Big order this month. Uh, as best as possible, I try and experiment with different products. Because we are an American company, there are periods of time where we may have a, a dip in products that a lot of us use. So in order to understand and get to, to know the majority of the products, if for example, Intra EA Plus is out, then I wanna find an alternative that's just as good that we can utilize and use for our Intra, if that is out of stock, for example. But this month, those that, that were watching the contest prep would have seen that I was using this with coconut milk. One scoop of this plus coconut milk is probably the best tasting whey protein you'll have. It tastes like a flake but with coffee in it. So any coffee lovers like protein. Also like a nice little pick me up in the morning. R1 whey blend. Jeff Nippard got me into whey blends. Sticking with the aminos, I've gone for the Super Aminos by America Labs. 3,500 milligrams of leucine per one scoop. So I scoop and a half it to get the 5,000 milligrams and relatively acceptable amino acid profile. Danny, Danny also chucked in another EAA BCA formula by RevUp Nutrition. The hydration and recovery complex on this looks, looks acceptable. Again, leucine on the little lower side, so I'll, I tend to double scoop that. Generally, I think what most companies are doing now is nailing amino acid formulas and just, it's becoming a battle of the, the flavors. The Intra EAA Plus by Supplement Needs, the Bomb Pop is fantastic. Fantastic flavor. Sticking with Supplement Needs, kidney and blood pressure stack, running low on that. I take four pills of this. The reason why I take four is because I take four of the Strom Sport Support Max. So that's why I only take four. We've got Vascumax. Oh, this is a, a very, very good product. Very, very good product. I used it for the past couple of past couple of sessions. Message Rich to say what a, what a great product it was. This and Komodo Pump will be my two favourite pump formulas. Nova Pump just behind. To which Rich replied, "Clever little mechanism at work. Loads and loads of pump ingredients in my experience leads to your pump." fucking off as your body produces bank loads of arginine to return to homeostasis. Clever usage of blood thinners and arginine inhibitors while not going crazy in the arginine precursors, many a pump and many a pump we had. So I'm using this alongside my three favorite pre-workouts. Danny's also chucked in Vaso Blitz, which seems just like what Rich was referring to, which is just a pump form of a load of pump ingredients. So we'll see how, we'll see how that gets on. And we've got Glycomax. My carbs are up to about 600 now. So at this point, I start using for Glycomax from Strom with my pre-workout meal. And then this is just what I've been using anyway. This is Komodo Pump. The, one of the very few pump formulas that I've seen with a, a mixture of uh, Lion's Main, Alpha GPC, Hoobazine. So it's, it's a pump formula that also has the benefit of the cognitive enhancement supplements that you see in a lot of pre-workouts. So very, very good. Very, very good. And I think Danny's just, these are just some EAAs that I think Foresight are doing with the two nootropic and EA mango pineapple. So these just a taste. Anyway, that is the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed the how to vlog. I'll probably do more of these if, if people enjoyed it. But I'm gonna leave it there and enjoy Nando's. See you very soon. Thank you, goodnight. Much love.